and welcome to Team Lawrence. I'm your host, Pat Brock, a public information officer for Lawrence County Schools. This is a very special episode here because we've got our superintendent with us, Mr. Clifford Garanto. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. You know, it's been trying times for us, but it's, it's a good challenge. It is a good challenge. And we've got our associate superintendent of operations and human resources, Mr. Tim Passmore. Good morning. Hey, sir. Good Thanks. to see you. Good to see you. And we're going to be speaking with you all today about how we want to have a planned safe return for school. And we know there's a lot of moving pieces that are going on right now, a lot of questions unanswered, a lot of concerns, and we want to make sure that uh, we're being transparent with the things that are happening behind the scenes to make sure that the safety of our students and our staff is secure. Uh, Superintendent, let's kind of just start this about why in your words, why we're doing this and why it's necessary. Well, you know, throughout the community, there's, there's been a lot of questions either through social media or, or word of mouth. And uh, we just wanted the public to know that we are working and, yeah. and that we are prepping, you know, and we're trying to get things ready. And we want to be very transparent to let the community know that uh, we've got the safety of their children, mm -hmm. who are also our children, right. you know, first and foremost, and, and, and our employees, yes, uh, you know, those those are our priorities and so uh, we just want them to know exactly what's going on and mm -hmm. the work that's being put in. And speaking of work, we want to make sure that we publicly let you all know how much we appreciate you because we know that it's not an easy thing to do. You're in your positions, but at the same time, you're human, you're parents as well. And so you have the same concerns as any other parent would have. So we commend you all in the hard work that you're doing on the back end for all of this. Absolutely. And, you know, and I told some of my former co-workers you know, yeah. from West Lawrence mm -hmm. High School. When I took over West, uh, we had some, a lot of challenges that year. That first year had, had some major events. Right. So I told them to hold on, you know, because I'm going <laughs> to a new position. So it, it seems like any time I've gone to a new position, we've had some challenges. Right. And, uh, I think we've got the team that, you know, that can meet those challenges and take care of them. You're absolutely right. And you tend to rise to the occasion of any challenge you meet, sir. So here we go, we're gonna get started with this. Mr. Passmore, let's talk about this, uh, the school calendar, because there's been some things said about what's going on here. It looks a little bit different than normal. It is different. Uh, back in, uh, I think it was May, uh, Mr. Garte reached out to me and said, let's start working on a calendar where students come back after September. Mm -hmm. So we started working on, <clears throat> started working on that. So, uh, you know, it's been in, in the works for a while now. It's not something that we just came up with at the last minute. Right. Um, we did change the calendar. Uh, the kids start back September the 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to condense the calendar and, and not go so far into summer, you know, graduating before, say, June the 28th, now we're going to graduate around June the 4th. That's mm -hmm. the last day of school. We had to cut out a couple of uh, holidays. So we were able to reduce the or take out the holiday in October. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, reduced the number of days for the, the Thanksgiving break from mm -hmm. 5 to, to 3. Uh, we were lucky enough that we did not reduce the uh, Christmas break, so it's the same, same, <laughs> same rate. Um, one confusing thing is people uh, are used to the semester ending mm -hmm. at Christmas break, but because we had to move the calendar back, we were not able to finish the semester mm -hmm. then. So if you look at the calendar, the last day for the yeah. first semester is uh, January the 25th. Okay. Um, we also uh, cut out um, a a um, holiday in March, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, luckily that reduced and we were able to um, get the, the kids out, the students out by yeah. June the 4th. And, and doing that, we, uh, we only reduced the, the student days, the mm -hmm. student instructional days by only eight days. So wow. we're extremely proud of that. That is great. And we know you have strict guidelines with the state and making sure that you are in school a certain amount of days. Is that correct? Right. You know, but with our strategic waiver, you know, we have that flexibility to adjust oh. that calendar and our you know, the Board of Education was very open to it, and I appreciate mm -hmm. their, you know, their efforts in listening to us and, and, yeah. and getting behind us with this. And, right. Uh, and I, I think it's very important to reiterate what Mr. Passmore said, is that we're cutting out eight instructional days, but mm -hmm. we're going to gain those days through not testing this year. You know, uh, right. the state of Georgia put in a waiver uh, so that we won't have to test this year, our, our state-mandated test. And yes, sir. We feel sure that's going to be approved. And so those days that we normally would use for testing are really the days that we've cut out God. the calendar. So I think it's going to be a good calendar for our employees as well as our, our students. Yes, it is. And for you all, the, if you want a copy of the calendar, you can go to our lcboe.com 
net website to find the calendar along with all these other forms here and different information that we're putting out we have it on our website and our facebook page we just want to make sure that you are able to read that information and understand it now let's talk about a typical day a tip is well, there is there a typical day well it, it, <laughs> we hope it's not our new norm you know right. but you keep hearing out of the you know uh media that this, things could be new norms mm -hmm. well we hope not but right we have put, in, put some procedures in place and you know we're we're going to encourage parents to drop students off at the building if they can if they can't you know we, we still have our our buses uh about 78 mm -hmm. 80 of them they're still going to be running mm -hmm. you know and we don't want to put our bus drivers in a situation where they have to screen students right. uh, because it, it leaves that bus on the road way longer and the, the most dangerous times for a bus is loading and unloading. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want them to have to screen. And so we are requiring masks for, for the bus ride, for, mm -hmm. and that's for the bus drivers as well as the students. Right. And <clears throat> so, as soon as they get to school, then we'll screen them for temperature. That's and, good. And our cutoff for temperature is 100 degrees right now. Mm -hmm. So if, if a student reads over 100, mm -hmm. you know, then we're going to send them to our school nurse, and then she's right. going to rescreen them. And then, you know, we'll keep them in an isolation room. and then we'll make that contact to the parent if we need to. That's very good. And I know you want to encourage the ones that are unsure about the bus to actually drive their kids to school. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, if there's many who can drop them off, mm -hmm. but keep them out of that close environment, you know, the safer it's going to be. Right. And uh, we understand we have different uh, different parameters with your household, and you may not be able to do that. But just, just please keep in mind that we're trying to do the best thing that we can for the safety of everyone with this. And I know there are going to be some adjustments made for the car rider line for Northwest Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> I'll let Ms. Passmore, it's been a project uh, of his, and we'll let okay. him speak on that. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to uh, uh, build a, a, a driveway off of Field Street, which mm -hmm. goes behind Northwest Lawrence. And uh, talking to Mr. Dean, the principal there at Northwest, I believe he's going to allow second and fifth grade. Second to, through fifth. Second through fifth to be dropped off at this, this new uh, uh, driveway that we have built. Right. Um, it has not been paved yet, but right. should be this week. So we, we're excited about that. And maybe that'll help get some of the traffic off of Highway 80 yes. and reduce some of the stress there. And, and uh, I'm, I'm sure the Sheriff's Department would be glad that we, we helping them out with that. But uh, we're excited about that. We're also going to put an, a new awning where they will drop the mm -hmm. students off at the gym area. Um, that probably will not be done before the first day of school, but it should be coming pretty soon thereafter. That's fantastic. You know, a uh, uh, special thank you to Brian Rogers and uh, County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. they, they, they helped us get the groundwork done for, for that project and put a new driveway in there. And uh, we'll, we'll, like Ms. Passmore said, we, our plan is to have that paved, we hope, this week or next week. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's beautiful how the community is really trying to work together for that one goal, is to make sure that we're able to get these kids, get the things going and running with the, within the schools, and try to have at least a smooth, safe return. That's right. Is that right? Smooth. All right, so let's talk about some of these uh, safety provisions. A lot of people are wondering about all the safety provisions. What is being done? Sanitation, what are you doing to keep things clean? You know, some of their main concerns is you know, it's going to be recess and break and mm -hmm. lunch and how we're going to handle those situations. In our lunchroom, our goal is, is, is to stagger our seating. Mm -hmm. You know, students, uh, our plan is not to sit across from one another right. and, and, and to leave a seat in between mm -hmm. the one who is on their side. And so we'll, we'll put X's on those seats that they cannot sit on. And right. it's going to call for some uh, scheduling on the part of our principals to get that yeah. worked out. And uh, as far as recess, we're going to do what we call cohort recessing, which is mm -hmm. really within that classroom. You know, if your child's in second grade classroom, that's who they'll go to recess with. Right. And, and so we're, we're not going to try and cross those cohorts as, or, or we're going to try and reduce that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Very uh, good. As far as sanitation, you know, uh, we've got the state has been good about sending us equipment, uh, mm -hmm. our PPEs, and they're sending foggers this week. Uh, at, at least one per school and we'll have sanitation stations within the lunchroom throughout mm -hmm. the school you know and the biggest thing is, is is going to be encouraging our students to take on that personal hygiene piece right uh, that that's the biggest mitigation mm -hmm. is you know encouraging them to take on that that piece and you know there's, there's always that question about masks you know right. why why don't you require masks for our students for mm -hmm. our faculty mm -hmm. well it's highly encouraged and right. you know at this point the that's, that's the steps we're taking is to highly encourage the mask, especially for those students who, who are at risk right. uh, and our, you know, our, our, our teachers as well. 
And, you know, we want to thank GEMA as well because we've seen a large shipment of PPE uh, came to the Heart of Georgia Risa and they distributed it to 10 different school districts. And so we were fortunate enough to have uh, some of those supplies as well. So we want to thank them for that. And, you know, this is definitely a team effort when you think about it. You're talking about the, the kids making sure that they do their personal uh, care things for themselves. I mean, we really want to work together as a team because there's so many different moving pieces and things do change every day. They do, and you know the, that's probably the most frustrating part. Right. You know, uh, planning on this is, is that you get mixed information. Right. Uh, and and so you, you you really you really have to make a judgment call sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that and that mixed information is not coming from our local uh, right. people, but you know I, I I think it's coming from a. a you know, political battle. Right, it, right. It, and that's just my opinion, Pat. And, that's okay. I but mean, it's hard to make judgment on the things that you keep hearing. You know, the, they're on both extremes. And right. We just want to do what's best for our children and our, and our employees. That's right. And we want to reiterate for y'all, just please be patient with the process because there's a lot of things that are having to be done. I mean, the, the people, the district leaders are thinking from every gamut and every aspect of scenarios of what could happen. And we want to make sure that we're doing and making the best decisions possible that we can for each and every student and our staff members as well. That's right. You know, and uh, as, as we move forward, there may be changes between now and right. September 8th, you know, <laughs> depends on what the newest data says. And uh, some, you know, we get some encouraging data and we get some discouraging data. And, of course. And we just have to disaggregate that that information yes, and, and, and you know determine what's useful and what's not useful you're absolutely right thank you mr passmore thank, thank you, you superintendent we'll be back ladies and gentlemen after this commercial break hi i'm jeff cannon president of citizens bank of orange county when we began looking for a location for our second dublin banking office the historic henry building looked like the perfect spot because dublin and lawrence county is our focus and making banking easier and more convenient for our customers is our goal Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, member FDIC, and an equal housing lender. A local full-service community bank offering quality banking services. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, now open in downtown Dublin. You've got miles and miles of grass to mow. So you're going to need a machine built to perform day in and day out, season after season. You're going to need a gravel built to mow the distance. Now at Myers Equipment and Supplies in Dublin. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, here with Team Lawrence. We've got our Associate Superintendents of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Hightower and Dr. Hall. Good to see you both. Good to be Good here. Good to be here. You two have been busy. Yes, we have. <laughs> You've been putting out a lot of fires, yes. so to speak, you know, and we all know that what you're having to do, the decisions that you're uh, having to make, we know that it has not been done lightheartedly. We know that you all have definitely been thinking about the whole scenario of what needs to be done. Talk to us initially. Let's start about uh, all of this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all of lot. this. Yes, it is a lot. It is a lot. And so you all have put out uh, surveys, you had emails for email addresses for the parent feedback, the teacher feedback. Talk to us about that. Who wants to start? I don't mind starting. Um, All right. So we thought it would be a great idea um, to make sure that we get as much feedback from every angle as possible right. throughout this process, um, from our community being the parents, um, from our staff members that's going to be in the mm -hmm. trenches every day and we'll be right there with them. And so each day, um, we call it the round table, but it's not really round, but we sit down every day um, and, and we try to go through those questions and make sure we respond um, to each person in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a series of questions that we may look at that may be best for everybody um, right. to hear publicly. Um, so we'll put it on the frequently asked question mm -hmm. um, document, which is located on our um, Lawrence County School District Facebook page, as right. well as our uh, district web page at www.lcboe.net. Um, and so we do that daily because we want this to be an engaging process. Mm -hmm. We want input as we face these challenging um, decisions. And we also respond to uh, calls to the office, personal calls, et cetera, um, because we know this is a very difficult yeah. and, and challenging decision that, that parents in our community 
um, having to make to decide what's best for their child mm -hmm. education and safety simultaneously right. at the same time. And sometimes the two clash um, because we do understand and we're considerate to the fact um, that we have a, a, a diligently hard working community as right. well. And mm -hmm. so we've just been trying to meet um, a ton of needs from a, a lot of different, different angles. And um, a big shout out to Mr. Garneau, our superintendent, and mm -hmm. Mr. Tim Passmore, our associate superintendent, for what they've done with the logistics and the school right. calendar mm -hmm. um, to try to protect as much instruction time as possible. Right. But ultimately, what they did is kept safety number one. That's Absolutely. right. And you know, you speaking of these emails, you've answered already probably over two over two hundred. It's it's been of actually responding, but that we're responding <laughs> to. However, it's valuable information because right. it gives us the frequently asked questions mm -hmm. um, that we can put out to everyone right. then in what is now an eight page document. Right. <laughs> of, of frequently asked questions and again right. that's on our website and on our Facebook page it's very helpful and as a result of parents being involved and community right. members being involved and we very much appreciate that because it's going to take all of us yeah. to address this very challenging time you're absolutely right and you know that's still part of that transparency there mm -hmm. to where we're wanting uh, the community to understand that we're hearing you Absolutely. We, we're hearing those cries. We're, we're hearing the, the, the issues that you may have that may be, uh, you know, just for your family, your family's need, but at the same time, we're listening. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to still make the, the best uh, decisions possible. Right. And again, please bear with us as we're going through this and as we're having to make adjustments. And as you see, you're updating this document mm -hmm. frequently. Right, yes. Frequently. Yes. And I love the fact that a lot of questions that you all are asking, they are on our website, they are on our Facebook page. So make sure that you are reading those documents. And, and this show here is just a special thing to actually put those words to the faces and the people that they're coming from. So that another part of that transparency and maintaining the integrity of our district as well as education. That's right. Absolutely. All right, so let's transition a little bit. I mean, because you wanna make sure that we're having high quality education as best we can uh, with the two choices that we have. Let's share a little bit about that, okay? Absolutely. Um, I think it's a testament to the Lawrence County School System that even prior to the pandemic, everything we do, we try to do in excellence and in high quality, not just to check a box saying we're providing this or to meet some criteria, but we want everything we do to be excellent and to be high quality. Mm -hmm. That will be no different despite the challenges of this pandemic that level of expectation will still be present for the FY21 school year. So mm -hmm. whether online or in person, we have made decisions um, that reflect a very high quality education being provided for our students. And we understand that there are some students that do have, you know, uh, compromised immune systems mm -hmm. where you absolutely cannot be in the classroom. Right. And so that adjustment being made is with the online. Right. And so talk to them about the online uh, how that will work for them and what that means. Um, I'll start with six through 12. Yeah. Um, what we're looking at doing right now is um, purchasing at a greater extent a mm -hmm. program that we previously and actually currently use in our mm -hmm. district right now just for other means right. um, that we refer to as Odyssey Wear. Um, it is a descriptive online program that comes with the curriculum already set, mm -hmm. um, but we are able to tailor that curriculum to the Georgia Standards of Excellence. Right. Um, we do, um, at this moment, have a facilitator um, that will guide that process. Now, uh, let me explain what, what a facilitator looks like at the middle and high school level. Mm -hmm. It will be a certified teacher, but that person may not be an expert in math, English, science, and social studies. Right. And the reason for that is because Odysseyware uh, provides the content um, mm -hmm. and the instruction. Now, I, I do know some would rather have an actual content teacher right. tied to that. And that may be an option, mm -hmm. but at this time, we can't make that right. call yet because we're still waiting to see what our numbers um, will mm -hmm. look like. Because um, to kind of put it in simple terms, we would have to be able to free up a staff member right. in that content area to be able to do that while not increasing the class size mm -hmm. of the teachers that are remaining to teach in face um, instruction, in person instruction, because the goal right. is to mitigate this virus. And so right. we don't want class sizes to increase. The goal is to be able to have them a little bit smaller so that we can right. socially distance. Because mm -hmm. I keep reminding our community, 
a strong education is our number two goal in this. Safety is our number one. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we we just simply won't be able to to outright say we'll have a math, English, science, social studies teacher mm -hmm. um, for Odyssey West students and online students for six through twelve right. at this time. But let me be clear: the content that they need to be successful will be there. Mm -hmm. Will be vetted. We'll be aligned with the Georgia standards of, of excellence, right. and we'll do everything in our power to provide all of the assistance that they mm -hmm. need, but that's Excellent. just simply something that we will not know until we have a clear picture of what the numbers will look like, that's which right. will be at, um, at the midnight on mm -hmm. Friday, July 31st, and yes. then we, we'll be very busy um, right. next week. And we want to put it in layman's terms as far as the time where your right. child needs to have access to that internet, to that computer. Yes, we want it to, uh, well, we will be required that, that yes. it looks like the regular school day. Um, those students will be expected um, to be logged in to Odyssey where in communication with that facilitator at the school mm -hmm. level at the regular time of the school day that our students are in, in person right. um, instruction. So that is an expectation. Um, that will be an expectation of, of having internet service that allows That's you to right. be able um, to, to fulfill that obligation mm -hmm. of, of online instruction um, but we want to be clear we're going to be that support in every right. manner um, that that we can and I can't echo that that sentiment enough That's I do right. know that there are some frequently asked questions out there um, that we have not given direct answers to such as mm -hmm. what will our special services right. um, look like whether it be on the gifted end mm -hmm. or our students with, with learning disabilities or right. whatever the special circumstance um, may be and we are still working through that um, mm -hmm. we hope to get answers very soon to that but there are a lot of things that we have to look at that goes into that process. Right. Um, you know, if we go with Google Classroom or, or Zoom mm -hmm. or Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams, now we're having to look at um, the, the legality of that yes. going live time. So then we have to look at whether or not a, a staff member is going to have to pre-record that mm -hmm. lesson and then play it later, which means there have to be a planning block in there to upload it, which right. means every lesson may be a day delayed. Um, it's just a lot of tough um, Right questions that we're going to have to get answers to mm -hmm. um, to get a better idea of what that looked like. But what we will guarantee is that our students um, that, that require special services will get the services that they need um, mm -hmm. to be successful and to be challenged and, and, and be provided with a rigorous education yeah. and a quality education. Very good. And that's exactly what I think we all need to hear. And also, we want to make sure that we reiterate that every student will be issued a Chromebook. Yes. We want to make sure we get that message yes. out there. So if you are uh, deciding to do online instruction, if you don't have uh, equipment, we will provide that for you. And hats off to Mr. Lance Smith and, and his department yes. for making That's that happen. Wonderful. That goes back to what I talked about earlier with the operations of us trying to keep safety number one. Right. That decision was solely made that, that every student would have a Chromebook to help keep down on the exchange of putting the phone yes. mm -hmm. back up and grabbing it back. Mm -hmm. So each kid, whether in school or online instruction, will have their own Chromebook right. that they will keep all day, um, every day. So hats off to Mr. Lance Smith and his department Very good. Um, for, for keeping safety number one at, 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 at the front of their mind and making that happen. Love that. Thank you so much. And Dr. Hightower, share with us about Google Classroom. I will. The developmental learning needs of elementary students are a little bit different, of course, in middle right. high. So, of mm -hmm. course, we're going to adjust for that. Right. And elementary students um, will be utilizing Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. And what that involves, as with middle high, is that the student be signed on during the normal school day right. because they will be participating in live interactive instruction okay. that goes back to that high quality education that we want and that we're committed to providing. Mm -hmm. We are not satisfied with just putting worksheets online right. and you completing them at home and we'll check them later. That is not, that's not mm -hmm. even a good education, much less a high quality. Right. Right. So they will have live interactive instruction all throughout that time through Google Classroom each day. Very good. And we know that you, are, you have working parents and things like that, so mm -hmm. we're hoping that you're able to make those adjustments uh, within your household so that you can make the best decision you can for your child. Yes. And we feel good about where we're at with our Google yeah. Classroom mm -hmm. um, instruction. Michelle Wynn, um, who's another oh. member of that tech department, has, has done a fantastic job um, mm -hmm. in making sure, even dating back uh, to when we were in in-person instruction right, last year, right. to making sure that all of our staffs um, members in Lawrence County are prepared mm -hmm. um, to be able to operate and, and, and effectively provide high quality um, right. instruction via Google Classroom. And mm -hmm. She's even done sessions um, this summer. And of course, I, we have a, a dedicated staff throughout Lawrence County, and so they, mm -hmm. they've shown up virtually 
uh, spaced out, socially distancing rooms, right. face to face, right. to make sure that they, they get this training to be prepared uh, to provide high quality education mm -hmm. um, at a very high level via Google Classroom. So everybody's working together for that same goal. Absolutely. Yes. And doing everything that we need to do as possible at the district level to make sure that you and your child has and gets the education that they need with safety being number one. Yes, right. absolutely. And yes, of course, we will not know until after we've received right. the applications um, from online or, or in-person classroom as far as how big those classes are going to be, how that's going to look. Right. Yes. Um, as, as everyone is aware, the, the deadline to register will be midnight. Um, July 31st, right. um, on mm -hmm. Friday, July 31st. And so, as I stated earlier um, in, this, in this interview, next week we'll be busy. Yeah. Um, so even though the cutoff is, is midnight, July 31st, mm -hmm. um, it'll take us some days to meet with each principal right. and see what that looks like for your building. Um, pulling, yeah. whether it be 20 kids or 100 kids out of East Lawrence High School or West Lawrence mm -hmm. High School, um, that changes your master schedule. Right. And so it'll take some time to see what that is going to look like and mm -hmm. then start planning for what that is going to look like. And right. so we know one of the other questions that we've consistently received is the hard deadline. And the right. reason for that right. hard deadline is there's a huge preparation process um, that goes into this to make sure that we're able to provide um, a smooth start to school right. in September um, for this to happen. Just to give you a ballpark idea at the high school, it typically takes Mr. Garnto and myself on and off uh, a good month to get a to get a master schedule solid right and we don't know what the numbers gonna look like by uh, right. midnight july 31st but if they come in at a higher rate uh it, it would almost to a certain degree be like restructuring a master schedule all over, over again, again. Mm -hmm. um, except this time we don't have a month to get it done also throughout this process and mr garto echoed this the safety and priority of looking out for our students is is, is very high yes. but so is our staff and so right. when you're planning this, I, I have to be fair to my staff members that are in the trenches. Mm -hmm. I can't come in on a Friday and let Mr. Right. Mrs. So-and-so know they're teaching a completely different subject That's right. on that Monday morning. That's right. And so there's a very big planning piece that goes mm -hmm. with this, and that is the reason for the hard um, deadline. We are right. very compassionate about those that's on the ropes one mm -hmm. way or the other, because mm -hmm. listen, we get we it. Understand. Um, I have yes. a kindergartner that will be attending um, East Lawrence Primary who can't wait to get back. <laughs> uh, Daddy ready right. for it to be back as well. <laughs> but um, but right. we just, it's, that's, that's the purpose for the hard deadline yes. is that it's going to be a lot of work going on behind right. the scenes right. starting that Monday after July 31st that, that is going to be required for us to be ready for our open houses and for school to start in You're September. right. And for some of you who've already registered your child in, for online instruction or classroom, and if you want to make that change, please, we'd like for you to email Dr. Hightower or Dr. Hall so that they can make those adjustments for mm -hmm. you ahead mm -hmm. of time. Yes, yes, that's how we want to handle it. And that. you know what we appreciate too about you all is you made a video for the staff, for the teachers, to kind yes. of give them some kind of reassurance because at the same time, we definitely want the children safe, but we have to look out for the safety of our staff members as well and want to make sure that they feel uh, comfortable and safe uh, doing a job that they love. Absolutely. Yes, and you know, the, the purpose of that video was twofold. One, to give them some assurance that we are right there in their trenches yeah. with them, but two, to solicit their feedback. Right. And they have responded beautifully to yeah. our teacher feedback at lcboe.net, and we've used their questions as well. Nice. Uh, because again, it goes back to it's gonna take all of us. Right, and I think a lot of people, they say, well, you know, you'd like, we'd like for you to see it from a, a teacher's point of view, and that's exactly what you all are doing. Yeah. And so we're yeah. listening, we're listening, we're taking those notes, and we are adjusting things accordingly, and making making sure yes. that yes. everyone is involved with the process, but understanding making the tough decisions is a tough thing to do. Thank yes. you. Anything else you two would like to share? Just again, reiterating, thank you all for your patience yes. and your understanding. 99.9% uh, .9 of all of our feedback included some positive statement of thank you for what you're doing. Right. So we're in this together. Absolutely, and I share the same sentiments. A big thank you to our community uh, mm -hmm. for the questions that they've been submitting. Same thing to our staff um, and, and just everybody working together, providing input and insight right. to help us make the decisions 
um, that are best for, for our community and we're thankful to our local health officials as well. Yes, um, who's been that. very um, mm -hmm. a very big part of keeping us updated mm -hmm. um, with with the numbers and, and, and right. advice on, on which route to go. That's right. Well, we thank you all so very much and thank you too because you are working very hard. We know that you love what you do mm -hmm. and we know that you take what you do very seriously we and do. to the heart. So thank we you do. so much, Dr. Hall. Thank you. And Dr. Wanda Hightower. Thank you. These are the Associate Superintendents of Instruction and Curriculum. Hi, I'm Matt South, inviting you to come see us at Dexter Meat Company. Our fresh cut meats include cube steak, stew beef, chuck roast, chuck eye steak, ground beef, ground chuck, and if you love steaks, you'll really love our New York strip, T-bone, and our ribeye and choice or prime cuts. And our marinated steaks have a distinctive taste that you'll be sure to love. We invite all our neighbors to come see us for the freshest cut of meat. Remember, we cater to. Call ahead and we'll have it fixed for you. Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday, 8 to 6. When the power's out, you're out of business. But with natural gas, with the city of Dublin, when the power's out, you can still cook on your gas stove or shower with your gas hot water heater or even fire up the grill. Plus save money every single day because natural gas costs half the price of electricity and propane. Start saving today with the City of Dublin Natural Gas. Call Brad Grimes at 277-5048 and you'll never be out of business with natural gas. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Superintendent Garnto here. We have had, sir, just kind of like throughout this show, really kind of break things down to the community to understand what's going on behind the scenes and everything that you all are doing for opening these schools up. That's right. And, you know, as we close out our show, Pat, you right. know, there's a few things I want to put out there. You know, just, just let the community know is that, uh, and, and Dr. Hall and Dr. Hightower, you know, spoke on this, but... Mm -hmm. Our online instruction is going to look totally different than what it did in the spring. Oh, for sure. You know, in the spring, we we were just within hours turning turn that around, being at home and going online, and, right. and you know, we were in survival mode. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be totally different for that online student, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we're looking for that, you know, for those rigor courses being there. Right. And, you know, those kids are going to have to, you know, really, really be a part of their education. That's right. Truly take it seriously. Absolutely. Like, this is instruction. This is right. And, and the other thing is, we're going to do open house a little different this year. Yeah. And we're going to take it over a course of two days. Mm -hmm. our, and, and we've broken that up by alphabet, mm -hmm. you know, and times. And so right. all our schools where will entertain those students whose last names are from S to Z. Right. We went, we went from S to Z first because A, A through K is always first, you know. So right. we, we decided to flip that around a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and so they'll go from 8.30 to 11.30 on September 3rd. Okay. That's, that's S to Z. And then L through R's will go from 1 to 4 on September 3rd. Mm -hmm. And then September 4th, we have our G through K will go 8.30 to 11.30. Okay. And then on September 4th, our A through L's will go 1 to 4. We've put that out already. Right. You know, we, would, we just want to reinforce that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you have blended families. Mm -hmm. And so you, you may have two last names within the family. So you just choose one of those. Uh, right. Whichever one that you want to choose, what what time period you want to choose, and right. we're going to ask the families to limit the guests that come with you. Uh, you know, it, we're trying to limit the crowd by mm -hmm. by spacing out, but we also ask the family to limit who they bring with them. That's right, and also we understand some of you have different work schedules, so make sure that once you hear from the teachers, or you know, you have that meeting, or you contact them to let them know so that they can make those adjustments for you with open house to be able to bring your child in. That's right, and I know you want them to kind of actually practice walking the child to the classroom so that they'll be ready when day one starts. Yes, and that's going to be a change for us. Is, yes. You know, at our elementary schools, we're not going to be taking parents in, you know, into the building that first day, so they're going to have to drop those students off. And the, I know. And I know it's a difficult change for them. It, you know, as a yeah. parent, it's hard to, hard to turn that pre-K child and that kindergarten <laughs> child loose at, you yeah. know, at the door yeah. to people that you're not as familiar with. Right. And, uh, but trust us with your children. We're going to take that's care right. of them. And you know we'll 
we'll get them to where they need to go. And, uh, you know, just from a mitigation standpoint, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to allow guests like we have in the past. That's right. And we know that you're going to have to have some very tough uh, conversations with those little ones to just kind of help them to understand as best they can about some changes that are having to take place. Yeah, and I think it's important that our parents go ahead and prep your child. Right. You know, go ahead and let your child know that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to drop you off at the car rider. And, you know, they're going yeah. to have to walk in by themselves or, you know, with yeah. an adult. And I remember when my almost 25-year-old was a pre-K, and that was how special that was for me to be able to walk him to his classroom. And so we do understand the emotional aspect of things that you're having to really uh, take into consideration. And so don't think that we're taking that lightly. We understand that part of that. Right. We yeah. do. We, we've had pre-Kers. We and, have had pre-Kers. And, and kindergartners, so... Uh, we do understand, Very, and, uh, yeah. but, you know, we want the public to understand as well. You know, we're as part of the safety protocol. That we're part going of on. the safety protocol. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you all so much for just tuning in here to Team Lawrence, and we hope that what we said today has been beneficial to you. A lot of the information, if not all of it, is on our LCB oe.net website as well as our Facebook page. And please continue to give us feedback, and please also... Be patient with us. Be patient with this process. Show some grace for us as we're having to make some very key decisions here at the district level. But know that safety is number one. Number one. Any last words, Superintendent? We look forward to school starting back. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just as excited as the students are to get back to school. That's and, right. You know, that's, 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 that's what our careers revolve around. That's, that's what right. our lives revolve around. And, we, and we're ready to see those students. Yes, we are. Thank you again, Doc. Um, I was about to call you doctor. That's okay. I'm speaking it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Superintendent Garcia. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have here on Team Lawrence. Uh, keep tuning in with us, and please keep, keep watching.